All right, UFC 135 predictions time. Uh, this card is in, to be honest, I don't even know. Pepsi Center, Denver, Colorado. So we're at altitude, and that's going to have to be kept in to thoughts on a lot of these fights. Facebook card only has three fights on it. James Tahuna versus Ricardo Romero. Generally speaking, I think Ricardo Romero might be the better fighter, but that being said, he has some cardio issues. He has some issues where he can't defend strikes worth anything, uh, as shown in the, well, really every UFC fight he's had, uh, except Petrozelli and Cal Kingsbury. He survived against uh, Petrozelli and did not against Kingsbury. So it's tough to say, but on a gut feeling, I'm going with James Tahuna uh, via second round TKO. I think Romero's cardio problems will be a problem, and I think his inability to defend stripes is also a problem. Um, and I don't think Tahuna has the suspect enough to take down, or uh, not take down defense, but um, submission defense to go out and to finish this one out of the blue. Takeda Mizugaki versus Cole Escobedo, a battle of a pair of veterans, really, who have not done the greatest things in the UFC. Uh, Escobedo made, making his debut, losing to Henan Barro. Nothing to be ashamed of there. And of course, uh, Mizugaki, who since signing with WC has been on a win, has been on a loss, win, loss, win type train. Lost to Torres, beat Curran, lost to Jorgensen, beat Yaya, lost to Faber, beat Duran, lost to Bulls. So he's set for a win. I think he will get it here by unanimous decision. He handles his cardio very well. Cole Escobedo is a good fighter, but you know, this is kind of a kind of a matchup between two good veterans at 135 who are not getting anywhere near the title, basically. Going with Mizugaki via unanimous decision, I think he's just that much better than Escovedo at everything. Uh, featherweight battle between Junior Asunkow and Eddie Yagen. Uh, Asunkow has fought in the OC before. He lost to Kurt Pellegrino, and if I recall correctly, he beat David Lee during his previous stay in the UFC. Yeah, I'm right. And he lost Nate Diaz. Forgot about that one. He's coming down in weight to 145. He's been fighting at 145 for a bit, but we haven't seen him at 145 in the UFC. I think that he's better than Eddie Yagen. I think Yagen has a lot of his holes in his game on the ground, and that could come back to beat him here. I think Asun Kao wins this fight. May, he may not finish him, so unanimous decision or a second, third round sub, I think. On to the preliminary spike card, Nick Ring versus Tim Boach. Nick Ring really can't defend takedowns terribly well. Tim Boach is a good wrestler. Tim Boach. Unanimous decision. Um, well, Ring is a better stand-up guy and probably a better grappler and looked really, really good against James Head. I have to go with Boach. I think he can take him down, take unanimous decision. Now, the one thing is, this fight is again at altitude. Boach's cardio has let him down somewhat in the past. So Ring could possibly exploit that. But I'm still going with Boach via unanimous decision. The other one is Tony Ferguson versus Aaron Riley. Aaron Riley, basically the tough challenger if you were a lightweight, basically. You go through Aaron Riley. And let's put it this way. If Aaron Riley wins this fight, Tony Ferguson will be uh, one of the few Ultimate Fighter winners to get cut. Um, that would be my opinion on the matter. I think he wins this fight probably by TKO in the first or second round because he's... Very heavy-handed. Riley's a tough guy, but I don't see him being at the level to beat Ferguson at this point. We haven't seen a lot of, Fer you know, we haven't seen a lot of Ferguson outside of the show. Saw him a little bit before the show, but he's a pretty legitimate fighter. He should be able to win this. Main card: Ben Rothwell, Mark Hunt. The fight that I wish was not happening. Um, Rothwell was a prospect not necessarily for title contention or rising star but a solid gatekeeper style oh, man he's only 29 well um solid kind of gatekeeper style he came in he got beat up by velasquez which was kind of the fight that gave velasquez that big jump in credibility along with the congo fight but less of the congo fight and then had a terrible Terrible fight with Gilbert Ivel, which he won, but it was terrible if you knew anything about Gilbert Ivel and saw him reversing takedowns from Rothwell and getting top position. It, terrible, terrible. Um, 
don't go watch the fight. Um, Hunt, he's not looked good lately. Um, he's a guy who has fought some of the best guys in the world. He has some very good wins. He's a very good kickboxer. That being said, I think Rothwell could take him down here, and Hunt, I don't think, will handle the, the altitude well. I don't really think Rothwell will handle the altitude well either, but I think he'll handle it better. I think Rothwell will be able to t take him down and maintain top position more often than not in taking down decision. I don't see him finishing Hunt because he just doesn't have those kind of submissions, but I go with Hunt Rothwell. Nate Diaz, Takanori Gomi. I'm going to go with Nate Diaz. Takanori Gomi has not looked good. Not not just since coming to the UFC, but honestly, let's see here. When was the last time Gomi looked good? Yeah, we're going to go back to about 2006 when Gomi was, you know, number one lightweight in the world. And he definitely is not anymore. He's not anywhere near the top ten, let's put it that way. The, Nate Diaz, the Nick Diaz loss actually started this downfall a little bit. Um, although the Marcus Aurelio fight before that actually kind of had that going too. Nate here is basically at lose and you're cut, uh, mostly because his brother has been an idiot with the whole GSP thing. And Nate himself has done himself no favors by losing back-to-back -back fights with DHK and Roy McDonald. Both very good fighters, but, you know, very few people survive three straight losses in the octagon. And I think that's motivation for Diaz to win this fight. I think Gomi's looked terrible lately. Beat Tyson Griffin, but it wasn't that much of a show. Um, his counter wrestling seems to be kind of non existent to the point where I think Diaz can take him down. I think he can out grapple him, and I think he can probably outstrike him. I don't really see how he finishes him other than by some kind of submission, but I'm thinking Nate takes it by decision. Also, altitude again playing a role because Gomi's cardio has not looked good in ages. Probably those five years I just mentioned. Moving on to Travis Brown, Rob Broughton. Taking Travis Brown. Broughton's heavy-handed. He's tall. He's a big, strong fighter. I think Brown's just a more well-rounded fighter. Brown's got a pretty good wrestling base. He's got pretty good stand-up. He's got pretty good power, as shown by the knockout on Struve. I take Brown probably by decision um, over Broughton in a fight that looks, you know... It, it, that if he can try to force the fight into the clinch and control it there, get some done on the feet. If he can take Broughton down, that's beautiful. Um, he could also possibly finish Rob Broughton, but I don't really have overly the confidence in it. Also, while Rob, I've never seen Rob Broughton horrendously gas, I've never been overly impressed with his cardio. And again, we're at altitude again, and that that could play a role as well. Josh Koshek, Matt Hughes. This was a lot more interesting when it was Diego Sanchez, Matt Hughes, because I thought Hughes had a chance in that fight. I don't think he has a fight chance against Koshek. Koshek's more explosive, faster, I think a better stand-up guy, a better wrestler. I don't think he'll get tapped by Hughes on the ground. I think he can win this wherever it goes. I'm going to say he takes a somewhat conservative approach and wrestles Hughes just because he's just had that eye, you know, operated on to... And apparently has some nerve damage there that Hughes could possibly exploit on the feet. But I see Koshchek taking it down and uh, taking a unanimous decision. After that, with the main event, John Jones, Rampage Jackson. Interesting fight. There's a lot of things about Jones we don't know. What we do know about him is he's very athletic, very fast, very explosive, very good wrestler. Who has unorthodox stand-up that works for him because he has a considerable reach advantage over pretty much everyone he would fight. That being said, don't know a lot about his chin. Don't know a lot about his counter wrestling, as stunning as it is. And people will say, well, he's beaten some good wrestlers, but he did it in fast, explosive fashion that didn't really allow the fight to develop, if you know what I mean. Like, um, examples would be, you know, the Vladimir Matryoshenko fight, to an extent, the, the the Bader fight and the Matt Hamill fight, and also the Jake O'Brien fight, where he did finish people, but they didn't really get their wrestling going because they had to deal with his reach. So we don't know about that to an extent. That being said, Rampage is not a guy who really wants to take you down. Rampage is not 
Uh, Rampage is a heavy-handed guy. Could he test that chin? Could that chin be found wanting? Yeah. That being said, we've seen Rampage in the clinch, and it's not pretty. Bones Jones likes to work from the clinch with both spinning elbows and strikes, and also to take you down from the clinch. And I think that's going to be key. I don't know if he finishes him. Rampage has been uh, is a guy that I don't know if you ever really think is going to get finished coming into a fight. The only times I can think of are the Vanderlei fights. Uh, I'm going to look at that real quick. Sakuraba fight. Pardon me. I forgot about that. Sakuraba, Vanderlei, Shogun. And that's it. Um, could John Jones finish him? I don't know. I don't know. Basically, I'm picking Jones in terms of how I'm going to take him by a fourth round stoppage. That's what I'm going to take. Fourth round. TKO for John Jones after he's controlled Rampage in the clinch, kept Rampage at distance, avoided Rampage's heavy hands. That's my thoughts on the matter. If Rampage puts him to sleep, that's not going to surprise me. If Rampage wins any other way, that will surprise me. Um, so that's all. Predictions for UFC 135. Enjoy it. Pay-per-view this Saturday. Peace out.